Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm actually doing this video live on Twitch. Occasionally I will do this live on Twitch. Uh, and basically what we're going to be doing today is ranking a tier list made by my buddy AXTV. Uh, his link will be in the description down below, but he tweeted out his tier list for these mechanics and competitive Pokemon. And uh, I just thought it'd be interesting to give my take on it. So yeah, uh, if you guys want to join me in my live streams, I go live every Monday through Thursday at 10 p.m. CST. And I'm trying real hard to uh, get partnerships, so... Yeah, and if you guys want to do me a favor, leave a like in this video, subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content, and let's go ahead and get into it. So, uh, everyone had an opportunity to say hi to the chat there. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let's go ahead and talk about these different mechanics. Now, there are a lot of mechanics in the game that I love. I, I personally find Paris Trap to be one of my favorites, especially when you can like just sneak it in there and they don't expect it. Uh, but there are also a few in the game that are just not healthy. And we'll go ahead and get into it. We'll do this tier list in order. S, A, B, C, D. I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to edit the names of these tiers. So S is perfect for the game. I love it. A is going to be healthy. B is going to be needs some work. C is going to be complete rework. And D is going to be remove bad. <laughs> like, I just don't want this in the game. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start off with the first one, which is Ally Switch. So I, I, I'm just going to outright say it. Uh, I don't like Ally Switch, and I feel like that isn't a hot take to have. I, I just personally find Ally Switch to not be a fun mechanic to play against. And I think it's it's not necessarily brainless. It does do some mind games. It is um, really nice for tilting your opponent. But the issue with it is, uh, when you compare it to other options when it comes to redirection moves, it's it's far too widely distributed. If only a couple of Pokemon had it, it'd be easy to tell, yes, this is the Pokemon that runs Ally Switch. Uh, but when you have so many Pokemon that have it, when you have Rotom Wash, Dusclops, Alola Marowak, like, Comfey, like, everything gets it. Like, oh, just about everything gets Ally Switch. And the fact that it's a priority move is so, so annoying. Also, when you compare it to the other redirection moves, um, it's just not as balanced. So let's say follow me. Follow me comes at the expense of the fact that both of these moves will be redirected into that Pokemon. The likelihood of them surviving those two moves isn't as high as uh, an ally switch user surviving the turn because ally switch users can go ahead and take a resisted move and that's pretty much it. It's very unlikely that you will get doubled into on the ally switch, especially if you're just then revealing it. So it's, it's pretty unlikely that you actually have to uh, deal with the repercussions of that immediately. So I don't like it. I think it needs to be removed from the game, or at the very least, the best rating I can give it is complete rework. Make it so it's not priority, make it speed-based, and then it wouldn't be as awful. And be right back. I'm gonna edit this part of the video out because my rat is doing something. There are three rats and all of them were trying to get into the treats that I left out by accident. <laughs> so yeah, um, back to the video. Hopefully you guys on YouTube caught that. That was a rat moment. Welcome to the stream. If, if it's your first rat moment, welcome. Okay, so next up we have Attract. I think Attract is fine. It's an interesting mechanic, but I definitely feel as though it needs a complete rework. Uh, I don't like, I don't like mechanics that are based entirely on chance. I forget what the likelihood of getting completely infatuated and not being able to move is, but I feel as though Attract would be interesting if it worked like. I don't know. I feel like it needs a rework. I have no real ideas as to how you can rework it to make it balanced, but I don't think it needs to be removed entirely. I think the fact that it's locked behind the Pokemon being opposite gender, meaning that you're not always prepared for it, and sometimes you can prepare for it. Like, you could use Attract pretty reliably on, like, Genies, which are always male, uh, which, that, that's that's interesting. I think it could be reworked in a way where it's balanced. I, I think the best way I could balance it is make it so... If you get infatuated one turn, you're guaranteed to be able to move the next turn. That's the only way I'm going to be able to, like, guarantee that I think it'll be balanced. Like, it's fine if you get infatuated one turn. You're guaranteed to move the next turn. All right. Assault Vest. I think Assault Vest is perfect. I also love just the fact that it's called the Assault Vest. It's such a powerful name for, a, for an item. So, uh, Assault Vest is perfect, in my opinion, because the trade-off is massive. So, if you don't know how Assault Vest works, you get 50% uh, you get a 50% higher special defense stat, uh, which is thematically appropriate because you're like blocking projectiles and stuff, I guess. 
Uh, but at the expense of that is you can't use non-attacking moves. Now, this is a perfectly balanced item in my opinion, because one, you can knock it off if you don't want to deal with it. You can just knock it off the Pokemon. But two, it leaves them vulnerable. If you see an Assault Vest on a Pokemon, whether it be singles or doubles, uh, you know for a fact that Pokemon is incapable of recovering. So while they may be eating hits, they're pretty much guaranteed to, once once their HP is down, they're not recovering it. What like The only way you can recover an HP, or recover HP through Assault Vest is through partner Pokemon healing you, which is fine because that partner Pokemon is now occupied keeping this Pokemon alive. Um, and Or like wish passing into the Assault Vest user, or maybe having Leech Seed in the field to heal the Assault Vest user. But the fact that they aren't able to stall you and still benefit from this increased uh, defense and special or increased special defense is perfect. I think it's I think it's a wonderful item added to the game. It makes a lot more Pokemon uh, viable. It's amazing on Gudra. It's incredible on Kartana, and I really like the item. I think it's super cool. Burn. I absolutely love Burn. I think Burn is a perfect mechanic right now, and that might be a hot take. That might be a hot take. Um, I, I feel as though the only thing, eh, you know, what? I'll, I'll move it down. I'll move it down. Healthy. So the only reason I, I am not putting it in perfect now, the only reason I'm not putting it in perfect is because burn has a chance of happening on moves. I feel like if burn was left entirely to... Uh, it, burn as a mechanic is fine, but the chance to burn is the issue. The reason I like burn is because it's a permanent debuff to Pokemon with um, boosted attack stats. They can't raise their attack stat higher than half of what its maximum would have been. Like, you're currently cut in half. On top of that, the residual damage is like negligible. It just undoes um, leftovers or a couple of other forms of recovery like ingrain or something. I think it's a really nice mechanic to the game. It helps check Pokemon that are intimidate immune like Dragapult. Um, and while there aren't, there isn't like a surefire way of burning barring no guard Inferno, I think, or no guard something like one of those like super strange niche moves that guarantees a burn but like doesn't it, it, like there's a weird accuracy check to it i don't know if, if there wasn't an accuracy component or a chance for it to happen hello mr rat um i think that it would be perfect so i like burn i think it's incredible choice items i think these are perfectly balanced in my opinion you only get a 50 percent boost to your stats and it's at the trade-off of only being able to use one move so let's say your opponent is an urshifu and they go for choice band wicked blow Yes, that is going to be the most powerful Wicked Blow you could possibly experience. But now you know you're safe to go into something that resists a dark move. Like a... I don't know. I feel I feel like Wigglytuff's a horrible example. Let's say like Magirna. Magirna, um, or I guess since I'm playing VGC, Klefki. Let's say you go into Klefki. Um, it's, it's able to resist the move. You know exactly what's coming. And you can identify whether or not something's choice scarf, choice bandage, choice specs based on the damage. Because if you know your damage calcs, you can identify, wow, that wasn't a crit, but it sure felt like one. I know that's a choice item. It's it's easy to counterplay once you understand that. And with choice items on, on your side of the field, it, it rewards you for playing smart. You're locked into one move. If you remove problematic Pokemon, like let's say that your, t uh, your opponent's team has a uh, fighting immunity and a fighting resist. But the rest of the team is wide open to like choice ban close combat or choice scarf close combat. If you're if you play smart and remove those Pokemon, you can go ahead and click close combat and like it's you're you're being rewarded. You have a powerful close combat. They no longer have any switch ins to it. You're good to go. I feel like it's a wonderful item that they added to the game. Confusion. I mm, I kind of want to remove confusion or give it a rework. I feel as though I'm gonna say remove. All right. So here's the thing with confusion. It's a it's in a, a thing completely based on chance. It's another ability completely or another mechanic completely based on chance. Yes, it's interesting being able to click swagger on something and increasing their attack stat with uh, the chance of them hitting themselves with a boost to the attack stat. But I don't know. Like I feel like if you want to hit something with its own attack stat, use foul play. Foul play is a fun way of doing that. A fun way of saying, hey, stop setting up on me. I'll, I'll mess you up. Confusion just feels like the game gets stolen from you, especially when, like, you're in a winning position. And G-Max Hatterene has to be the most annoying Pokemon to face. I was running Safeguard Arcanine for all of, like, Series 3 when G-Max Hatterene came out, I believe. That's when it was legal. Uh, and that was just so I would never have to deal with it. Like, I, I just never like getting confused. And yes, you could run Lumber. Yes, you could run all these things. 
but it's you can only do so much to prevent confusion and especially when it comes off of like a chance like let's say what's a move with a chance to confuse hurricane when you get confused off of hurricane your heart rate just elevates like oh my god i survived the hit but if i can if i hit myself here i lose it's not fun i think it should just be outright removed there's really no place for it outside of um outside of casual play in my opinion i just think it's it's overall really really lame <laughs> It's a lame move, or a lame mechanic. Crits. I think these need a complete rework. So, I think crits are fine. I don't like random crits, but I'm not sure how to go about un like making crits not random. I don't know. So, we already have a mechanic in the game with crits where you can increase your crit chance, and at that point... You know, it's you have a chance to crit. You know, at plus one, I believe it's like a twelve percent chance to crit. Plus two, it's a fifty percent chance to crit. Plus three, you have guaranteed crits. I feel as though we can do something with that to rework crits where it's not completely random. Um, and then shell armor becomes even like abilities like shell armor become even more useful because there are Pokemon that will run crit sets like Criteleon or Crit Kiss. We saw Criteleon and Crit Kiss. And I think the fact that they have like a 50% chance to crit or a 100% chance to crit is perfectly fine because it requires some sort of setup or and or you know what's coming. But completely random crits, like when I get crit by by like super luck, not super luck, when I get crit by like um, Serene Grace Togekiss and I think, wow, that's super luck scope lens Togekiss and it's not, I just got random crit. It throws me off for the entirety of the game and I'm just not sure how to come back from that. I, I The reason I like crits is because it sets up a situation where increasing your stats doesn't help your opponent, uh, and it, it like provides proper counterplay. Um, I like you know besides just set up wars. Like I'm gonna sword dance, you're gonna iron defense. This is like I'm gonna ignore you. Um, I feel as though there is a better way to implement crits. Maybe crits can only happen on a particular turn, or maybe lock crits behind a setup move. Um, I think that would be an interesting way of doing it. Maybe like, I don't know if it'd be balanced, but like if you could, you, you know the move laser focus that guarantees crits on the next turn, it could also guarantee that they can't protect the next turn. That would be an interesting way of, impl of implementing crits without chance. You can set up a crit on the next turn that will allow you to cut through the defenses and not have to deal with protect. Cause that's, that's one of the few things keeping people from running laser focus is the fact that in VGC you can protect and just completely ignore things. So yeah, that, that's my take on it. I feel like crits just need a rework damage enhancers i'm gonna say overall these are healthy if not perfect um i'm trying to think of ways that they're not perfect i mean like choice items that yeah they're, they're damage enhancers you know i'll say damage enhancers are perfect I, I feel like they're like honestly super cool you have a lot of different options for it you can run a muscle band you can run um you can run what's it called wise lens you can run um expert belt life orb like there's a lot of different items and they fit your different needs um, I, I like them. I like them. There's very little drawbacks to some of them, uh, but the reward isn't as big as other ones. So like Life Orb, that 30% boost to every single attack, but you take recoil on every single attack. I think that's a perfectly balanced item. Like, you know, every Pokemon should be able to run the Life Orb. There's no outright Pokemon that's broken with the Life Orb, but you're able to see like them having to deal with the repercussions of their actions, if that makes sense. I think it's fine. Uh, and then there's like Miracle Seed, where you only get a boost on grass moves, but it's not that big. I think I think it's a perfectly fine uh, mechanic in the game, and I like it a lot. Dynamax. Okay, well, Dynamax, I don't think needs to be removed, but it needs a complete rework. Uh, it's been one of the most controversial mechanics in the game, like, ever. Uh, I think it's, like, the only thing probably more controversial than it is probably, like, Z moves. Or less controversial is, like, Z moves. This is one of the most controversial mechanics ever. Um, so I feel as though Dynamax should not have given you a double your health. Double your health seems excessive. Uh, <laughs> cause you can, I, I don't know. Like it, it's, it's almost like if, if you Dynamax certain Pokemon, they just can kind of steal the game and you shouldn't be able to live like a disgustingly powerful, super effective hit with a Pokemon that's weak to it just because you Dynamaxed. And, and then there's Max Airstream on top of that. Max Airstream is probably one of the most incredible moves ever added to the game. And being able to boost your stats with every single Max move is a little gross. I, I feel like we could deal with the 
the speed boosting stuff and like these powerful powerful moves if you only got like a 25 or 30 percent hp increase um but definitely double hp that that's that's excessive or maybe we could have double hp but all of the max moves don't have any secondary effects maybe that's what it could have been but i don't know i, I feel like it, it could have been implemented a lot better i think fake out is probably perfect i i love fake out there are pokemon that are fake out immune there are ways of counterplaying fake out and the fact that fake out is only a turn one move is really cool because you have there's a lot of counterplay you could switch in your zarina with cleaning majesty to block the priority move you could switch in a psychic train pokemon to block the fake out uh in on in like the position where you're using fake out like it's super cool because you're able to use that opportunity to provide a lot of offensive pressure you might try to sneak in a ko you might try to get up a trick room I think it's a perfect move for the game. I don't see anything inherently wrong with it. Um, yeah, like there's there's plenty of counterplay to it. There's plenty of situations where it's super, super good. I, I love it. I think it's a perfect, perfect move. Flinch. It needs a rework, a complete rework. I think Flinch should probably be dedicated entirely to fake out, if that makes sense, or fake out moves. Let's say that there was like a ghost type fake out. That should flinch. Let's say there was like a fighting type fake out. That should flinch. Rock slide should not flinch. I don't like the idea that moves can be decided on a 30% chance. Um, King's Rock on top of that is really annoying if you ever face like King's Rock skilling Pokemon in singles. I, I feel as though um, if you locked flinch entirely behind moves that are guaranteed to flinch or maybe an ability that makes it so your first move always flinches. Actually, no, that'd be busted. Oh my god, imagine if Urshifu had that ability, he just wicked blows you and you flinch and he gets two. No, just just fake out and maybe fake out clones. I feel like that'd be a perfect move. Um, the chance to flinch is a little bit annoying. Like, granted, if you set up a trick room, you can minimize your chance to flinch because you're going to be, you know, going before them. You can't flinch if you're going before them, but there, there are ways around it. I think it needs a complete rework, though. I, I don't like chances to flinch. I feel as though it takes a lot of skill out of the game. And yes, you can do RNG management, but... It could, it could have been implemented better. Follow me. I think follow me is healthy. I won't put it in perfect, but I think follow me is a very healthy move in the game. Uh, so follow me is like ally switch, but you get punished for clicking it. Yeah, I, I guess that's the only way I can really describe it. <laughs> so if you follow me, let's say you have an Ndidi on the field and you follow me away a dragon move and a rock move. Guess what? Ndidi has to take a dragon move and a rock move. Or if you follow me, you can get taunted and then you can't follow me the next turn. Where in comparison, ally switch, you can ally switch and dodge the taunt and also maybe take a move that doesn't do any damage to you or minimal damage while your partner Pokemon also takes minimal damage because the moves were completely directed into the wrong Pokemon. Take like Lapras plus Comfey. If you ally switch, Comfey is going to be taking that fighting type move like a champ, and Lapras is going to go ahead and take that poison type move and not even care, you know? It's it's interesting. I, I feel as though Follow Me is just better implemented because you know it's coming on certain Pokemon. It's not completely widely distributed. I think it's a healthy move. It's not entirely perfect. There are some Pokemon that I feel like, you know, don't really deserve it. <laughs> and sometimes it's super annoying, but I think it's a healthy move. I think it's a healthy move. Freeze! Wow, complete rework. Um, maybe even completely removed. So here's the thing. Ice is already an incredible offensive typing. Um, the chance to freeze makes it even more enticing, but the fact that freeze could completely nullify a Pokemon where you have to play as though this Pokemon does not exist uh, is, is really, really annoying. I don't think they're ever going to remove freeze and i think that if they were to rework freeze it should be you're guaranteed a thought the next turn maybe make it the new flinch um i i don't think you should be disabled for like an inf a possibly infinite number of turns I, I think it's a really dumb dumb mechanic yeah like that that's really all i can say about it yes we got misty terrain to completely negate the chance of you know secondary effects happening and that's why Tapu Fini was so popular in previous formats, because it could set up Misty Terrain with uh, just hitting the field. But overall, I think Freeze either needs a complete, a complete rework or just to remove it. Um, for now, I'll say remove. I don't think Freeze has any place in this format or any competitive game. Gems. This is actually a, gem, a Gen 5 staple. 
I like gems. I thought they were interesting. I don't have too much experience with them because the rare amount I played Gen 5 on Showdown, uh, gems were just meant to like increase the power of a, of a single move. It was sort of like a precursor to Z moves, um, but they had like no secondary effects. It was just like, hey, this is gonna be a very, very strong acrobatics. Uh, I think it was fine. You could do it once per game and you couldn't choose when you did it. Like if you were using a flying move and you had a flying gem, that first flying move was gonna hurt real bad. It wasn't like okay, I want to save my uh, I want to save my Super Sonic Sky Strike for a couple of turns for now. I think it's fine. I, I thought it was healthy, and like keep in mind, I didn't play VGC in Gen Five. I just play it on the Showdown ladder once in a while. Uh, heal slash Cure Berries. I think that these are perfectly fine right now. I think they're perfect. Uh, it allows you to be prepared, like Lumberry. It allows you to be prepared for confusion or whatever you really want. Uh, it, it encourages being prepared. Uh, and on top of that, you can calc your Pokemon to make sure they live particular hits and go down to berry range. Uh, I think they're I think they're good. I, I like them a lot. Like maybe in Gen 7 when we had 50% heal on Figgy Berry, that wasn't amazing, but now I think they're I, I think they're pretty good. Helping hand. I think it's a perfect mechanic. You're sacrificing a turn on your support Pokemon to boost the move of another Pokemon. That's a fair trade-off. You can taunt it. But I think that's a pretty fair trade-off. I like it a lot. It's it's like, hey, Durant, kill, like, you know? <laughs> Intimidate. Uh, before, I would have said it was only healthy or needs work, but now I think it's perfect. I, I don't hate Intimidate. Yes, there are some, like, Intimidate cyclers, but the fact that they buffed other abilities to make Pokemon Intimidate immune, it's good. It's good. Inner Focus is now Intimidate immune on top of being Flinch immune, so Incineroar has no business dealing with the Mudsdale. Mudsdale is the perfect Incineroar counter. Um, uh, what else got it? Scrappy is now Intimidate immune, so Pokemon that can hit Ghost types can just spam close combat over and over and over again. Uh, I like it. I, I think prior to this generation, maybe Intimidate wasn't the healthiest thing in the game. But this generation, they did a pretty good job balancing Intimidate, and I really appreciate the effort they went into it. Oblivious got Intimidate immune. That's that's something. Why why did they give Oblivious Intimidate immune? I mean, thematically, it's, it's appropriate, but I think it's fine. And if you're using Intimidate, you get rewarded for smart board positioning. Hey, I can switch in my Incineroar here, Intimidate this Pokemon, allow my Trick Room setter to live this hit, set up the Trick Room, and get rewarded for that amazing play. It's, it's good. I like it. Uh, Mega Stones. I thought it needed mm, it, it needed some work. I, I think it needs some work. It doesn't need a complete rework. There were some Pokemon that just didn't need Megas. Tell me, tell me for what reason we needed Mega Salamence. Like yes, Mega Salamence is a very cool Pokemon. I liked it a lot. I used it a lot. I know a lot of people are going to be upset at me for saying we didn't need Mega Salamence, but did Salamence need a buff? It, it was already doing pretty good. It was an Intimidate user. It got Tailwind. It was a Dragon type. It was doing pretty good. And then all of a sudden it was like, hey, this thing is like, it, it can probably KO Kyogre Primal with Double Edge. It has a chance to KO. That that That's just unnecessary, dude. Like, Absol needed a Mega. Abomasnow needed a Mega. Bayonet needed a Mega. But why are we giving such broken pokemon megas we didn't need mega rayquaza it was already busted that's my only really take that's my only real take on megas i thought they were cool we didn't need all of them hera complete rework um if not just needs some work I, I would say para would be perfectly balanced if you completely remove the the um the chance for you not to be able to move I think the speed drop is enough punishment. In the same way I think burn is a very healthy mechanic, I think para would be a very healthy mechanic if it was just the speed drop. If it was if it was in, entirely just a permanent cut to your speed tier, it would be a perfect mechanic. But no, no, they had to be like, mm, Pokemon, we want us to have chance in our game. Uh, yeah, that, that's what annoys me. I think it would have been a lot better if it was just that. That's my only real criticism of paralysis. That's it. Like, I think it would be good. Parish Song. I think it's healthy. I like it. I almost think it's perfect. Uh, Parish Song is really cool because uh, a lot. it's it's not widely distributed. Uh, yes, Parish Trap can be annoying to face, but pack U-turn, pack Parting Shot, pack Flip Turn. Have some Ghost Types in your team so you can cycle and don't get caught off guard. You can usually tell Parish Song in Team Preview. 
um it, it's it's not that difficult to beat if you in parish song takes a lot of skill to play in my opinion people don't give parish players enough credit uh it's also a nice tool to have as like a tech move like let's say your opponent starts setting up you're like hey i see your swords dance and i raise you death in three turns get out of here and then they're like all right i'll switch out i don't want to lose my pokemon it, it's it's nice counterplay and on top of that you can literally just get like the three two pokemon lead and then click parish song and then just stall out some turns it requires some legitimate skill and with the pokemon that get it it's not it's not too broken prankster uh it would have been broken before i think prankster is perfect right now if not healthy um let's give it healthy i think some pokemon don't deserve prankster <laughs> it's not widely distributed um dark types are now completely immune to prankster and people still aren't used to that i still find people trying to like taunt thievil and I'm like, no, you can't taunt Thievil. It's a dark type. Like, your Whimsicott's taunting my Thievil. No, it's not doing that. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I, I have Thievil teams, and they're strange. But, uh, yeah, I think it's fine. I think Prankster is probably... It probably needs to be distributed on some different Pokemon, or maybe take away moves from certain Pokemon. The ability itself isn't busted. The ability itself isn't busted. Uh, it's just some Pokemon need their move pools to be a little bit more shallow. Like, there's no reason Whimsicott should be able to set up uh, Tailwind and also have a Trick Room option because yes, Trick Room isn't boosted by Prankster, but the fact that like Whimsicott can threaten Tailwind but also just be like, hee hoo, I'm gonna click Trick Room instead, like that's annoying. That's annoying. Uh, but yeah, Protect, uh, it is healthy, but I think it needs one little rework. And I would say it's perfect. You should not ever, ever be able to double protect. That's just my opinion. You should, <laughs> you know how many games are won and lost on that 30% chance to double protect? I think protect is fine. Make it, like, there's only a, one Pokemon that completely says, I don't care about your protecting, that's Urshifu. Whatever, that's that's an Urshifu issue, that isn't a protect issue. Protect should not have a chance to fail the second time. It should just be a straight up fail on the second time. That's just my take. Switch out, get smarter board positioning, but... There are so many games that are won and lost on, on the double protect, and it's just not, it's never fun. <laughs> uh, poison, uh, I would say healthy. It needs some work. Uh, toxic is perfectly fine. I think Toxic is unironically not toxic. Um, I think Poison is fine. You know, you trade off. So Poison, basically, it's consistently higher damage, um, where Toxic is lower damage that scales to, oh, I hit my microphone, that scales to higher damage uh, as the turns progress and the timer resets when you switch out. Um, but I feel like the only issue is the chance to poison. Sludge Bomb chance to poison, uh, Poison Sting chance to poison if you ever see it. That's really it. Um, I like that poison types are incapable of missing Toxic. I think that's cool. That's a fun mechanic, and I'm cool with it. I, I think that's just it. The chance to poison is annoying. Uh, Resist Berries. I think they are perfect, and that might not be a great take. Uh, that might be a hot take, but I think Resist Berries are perfect. So, here's the thing. Let's say you are a friendly Flapple player. You're like, hmm, I want to use Flapple, but I do not want to die to max airstream. Well, guess what? You're trading off a better item, like a life orb, to be prepared for one particular move once. Let's say the berry activated every single time, or like two or three times. No, get that out of here. But once, I think that's fine. You're prepared for a particular calc. Uh, and you get rewarded for being prepared. I, I feel like just re rewarding prepared players is good, and Resist Berries do that. They're the essence of that. Safety Goggles. Perfect. Perfect item. It's so cool, uh, because you block Sleep Powder. It, it's, once again, it's an item that rewards you for being prepared. You block Sleep Powder, you block Spore. It's, it's basically a built-in overcoat, or I guess Overcoat's a built-in safety goggles, but it's cool. I, I like it. You can run it on so many different Pokemon. Arcanine's an amazing safety goggles user. Incineroar's an amazing safety goggles user. There are so many Pokemon that really, really benefit from it, and I love it. It is one of my favorite items in the game, if not my favorite item. Shadow Tag. Uh, I would say it is healthy. I, I, I mean, like, there's plenty of counterplay to it. Ghosts are immune to Shadow Tag. U-turn, Parting Shot, Flip Turn... Like, we have a lot of ways of escaping Shadow Tag, and I guess, like, just the pressure you put on things, it's fine. There are some Pokemon that are really, really annoying with it. Like, yeah, Gengar is a bit annoying, especially in a format like uh, 2019, where you could trap in a Groudon with a Kyogre, and Groudon's just like, ooh, I guess I'm dying. Uh, but I think I think it's fine. It could be improved a little bit. I, uh, maybe give it 
to weaker Pokemon, but, you know, prior to Gengar, Mega Gengar getting it, it was probably fine. Sleep. I think Sleep needs a complete rework. If not, yeah, I think Sleep needs a complete rework. Once again, a uh, mechanic that relies on chance. You have, I forget what, what it is exactly, but you have a certain amount of chances, or a certain percentage chance to wake up each turn uh, with one guaranteed turn of sleep. And then you're guaranteed to wake up on like after like three turns of sleep. So I feel like maybe if you just made it guaranteed two turns of sleep, it wouldn't feel as though sleep powder users that land the sleep powder and then they wake up immediately are just completely, you know, just they just get like the crappy end of the stick with that. Like, I, I feel like that's a little bit annoying. And at, at that, you can play effectively. It's like, OK, I'm going to be asleep for two turns here. How do I play effectively? Let me follow me. Let me switch out here and burn a turn of sleep here, burn a turn of sleep there. I feel like if there was a set number, not three, not one, but like two, I think two's fine, it would be good. I think it needs work. Some people might disagree with me with that, but I just don't like the chance of things. Uh, substitute. I think it's perfect. I think substitute's perfect. Um, there are plenty of ways around it. Infiltrator, sound based moves. It's annoying on some Pokemon, but with proper counterplay, it's not too difficult to deal with. And you get rewarded for setting up the substitute on a switch. If you predict a switch, it's very difficult to come back from. Uh, and I think that's fine because it's a risky move to click. You're sacrificing 25% 20, of your HP to set up a substitute. Tailwind. Um, I kind of like Tailwind prior to this generation. I don't like the immediate speed boost. I prefer Tailwind when you had to protect a Pokemon to set up Tailwind and then benefit from it. Or just benefit after the move was set up. I think I think I preferred it in that sense. Uh, I don't like the immediate Tailwind, because Pokemon like Whimsicott just become extremely annoying to deal with. Pokemon like Talonflame become extremely annoying to deal with. Uh, I, I I prefer old Tailwind, is the gist of this. But I don't think it's terrible. I, I like it. I think it's healthy for the game, but it could be improved just in that sense. Go so revert to old Tailwind. Uh, reject modernity. Embrace tradition. Taunt. I think it's perfect. I think Taunt is a perfect move. Once again, a move that rewards you for being prepared. If you're prepared and you taunt something that you expect to ally switch, that you expect to go for a trick room or a sleep powder or a hypnosis, you get rewarded. It is a move and a mechanic that rewards preparation, and I think that is phenomenal. Terrain. I like terrain. There's a lot of cool things you could pull off with it. I would almost put it in perfect. Actually, I will put it in perfect. I think terrain's one of the greatest mechanics added to the game since Gen 7. Or this, this iteration of it is good. Previous iteration, maybe not. Um, in Gen 7, it was a bit strong, <laughs> uh, but in Gen 8, it's it's perfectly fine, you know? It's it's a mechanic that allows you to prevent an other annoying mechanics like flinch, sleep, uh, poison, etc. Like, just any anything that you just don't want to deal with, you're, you're prepared for. Um, and on top of that, it boosts certain Pokemon that wouldn't have been very viable either. For example, Rillaboom is pretty good with grassy terrain. Uh, Pink Urchin actually has a niche in setting up Electric Terrain for uh, Raichu, and Raichu is really cool under Electric Terrain. Uh, Indeedy would not be nearly as good if it didn't have Terrain. It would have been a very forgettable Psychic type. Uh, so yeah, I think it's just an overall really, really cool mechanic that they really reined in this generation and balanced pretty well. Next up is Trick Room. Uh, I almost feel as though Trick Room should not be four turns. I, I will, I will put it healthy or five turns, or whatever amount of turns it is. It's too many. <laughs> I forget the... I always forget the number because I'm just counting on the... I, I use the in-game counter and I forget the actual number. Please forgive me if I sound like a scrub. I just... I forget a lot. Um, I think Trick Room is interesting. It rewards you for setting it up and using Pokemon that are slow. Like, outside of Trick Room, Pokemon are very difficult to deal with. But the thing is, inside of Trick Room... You, you, let's say, let, let's take Gigantamax Lapras. Gigantamax Lapras's main drawback, besides the fact that it's slightly weak, like let's pretend it's like weakness policy Lapras. Its main drawback at that point is that it is slow. It will get outsped. Under Trick Room, for I think just a couple too many turns, Lapras is one of the fastest Pokemon in the field, one of the strongest Pokemon in the field, and the bulkiest Pokemon in the field. So, it, like, it, the thing is, like, bulkier Pokemon also tend to be slower Pokemon. They're not glass cannons and slow. That's called being a terrible Pokemon. <laughs> uh, I, I feel as though Trick Room 
could be balanced by decreasing the amount of turns, maybe make it the same as Tailwind or something like that, uh, and it would be fine. I just think that Pokemon that are that bulky and that powerful should not be able to operate so freely for so many turns, you know? Because the main drawback is their slow is their slow speed. And someone just hosted me. Who just hosted me? Prince Pod, thanks for the host. Uh, and th guys, we're at 73 viewers. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for those of you watching it live. Weakness policy. All right, all right, we need rework. <laughs> I don't think you should be able to self-proc your weakness policy. Um, it would reward preparation. Like, like You can sense a theme here. I like mechanics that reward preparation. Weakness policy is not rewarding preparation um, in, in this format. In previous formats, it, it probably did. Uh, you can still self-proc, but with Dynamax, it's not as fun. It, it's not as um, unsafe, I guess. It's not, it's not as hard to punish uh, or easy to punish. I can't speak, but... If weakness policy was like defiance or something where only your opponent could set it off, I would be perfectly fine with it. It's much easier to deal with, but when you're able to self-proc weakness policies, it becomes just kind of cheesy. That's the only way I can describe it. It's like, oh, that's cheesy, ew. Uh, and it, it feels very lame. That's the only rework I think it needs. Weakness policy is fine. Weakness policy is perfectly fine. Just make it so only the opponent can set it off, and I think it's good. It would reward preparation because you have to you know, intimidate right, you have to snarl right, you have to get your calcs down. It's good in that sense. Weather. I think weather's perfect. I, I like the way weather interacts. I, maybe they could do what they did with terrain where they decrease the power a little bit, but we've been dealing with it pretty fine for like years. Uh, I like the fact that weather only lasts a couple of turns unless you bring an item to extend it. I like the fact that weather can get overridden looking at you, Primal Groudon, Primal Kyogre. Uh, and I like the fact that weather creates teams based around it uh like hey this is a rain team while they are very powerful within rain they're very fast within rain their main drawback is they share a lot of weaknesses like that's cool there's a lot of stuff that goes into weather that's pretty interesting i like it z crystals i think it needed some work i don't like how strong they were i think they were just a little bit too strong for example kamoo yes kamoo was not amazing but jeez you ever seen kamoo just set up and, and hit both Pokemon with a dragon move. Ew. <laughs> Ew. Uh, I think Z, Z, Z crystals just need a little bit of work. Um, maybe just rain in the power a little bit. Don't give Kamo a move that hits both Pokemon. That's really it. Uh, yeah, that's, that's really all I can say about it. Uh, I like that they could do some interesting stuff, like maybe Z conversion. Like, Z conversion was cheesy, but it was cool. You're able to get secondary effects, and moves that were sometimes useless, like Z-Hypnosis, you would get a speed boost. That was interesting. I like that you could power up useless moves. Z-Splash was cool, because it was just a better swords dance. That was fun. Physical special split. The greatest change to ever happen in Pokemon. The greatest change to ever happen in Pokemon. Do you know what it was like using Absol in Generation 3 with that 130 base attack, and then you click swords dance, and then you click knockoff and do two damage because you're using its 75 base special attack. That was garbage. Why would you lock? Why would you lock physical and special moves behind types? You made Flareon useless. <laughs> yeah, no, the splitting moves into physical and special was probably the greatest thing to ever happen in this game. I, I think that that that's just that just goes without saying. I think it was probably one of the greatest things that happened in this game. <laughs> Okay, and priority moves. Uh, I would say healthy, uh, because Grassy Glide needs to be nerfed. Uh, <laughs> it would have been perfect prior to Grassy Glide. So, we have a lot of ways of dealing with priority moves in this game. We have uh, Psychic Train to block them. We have Queenly Majesty to block them. We have Protect, Quick Guard. There's a lot of ways of countering priority moves, and if you're prepared, you can deal with them. But Grassy Glide... Grassy Glide, though, it's... You know, you know, that's really all I have to say about it. Uh, here's the tier list. Let me know what you guys think about it uh, in the comment section down below if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're here on Twitch, follow the channel. Uh, I go live every night at 10 p.m. CST from Monday through Thursday. That's not every night, but it's most nights. So yeah, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, join, notif or join the Discord, turn on notifications, whatever. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.